So yeah, well, so we'll go through these, and some some of it gets a little repetitive. It's looking to be a little bit more exhaustive than, than uh, I guess, organic. Um, but uh, please, if you just feel like we we've, we've covered it or anything, or some of these seem, you know, you just say let's go. It's you know, it's fine. Um, and uh, if you want to, uh, just let me know if you have any questions in the middle or okay. anything like that. It's not doesn't need to go straight through. We can take breaks and whatever. It's just sort of a thing. So, uh, so we've, we've gotten kind of where we're at. Um, I'm going to write, I'm going to ask you about kind of how you can currently compose on using the computer, how you currently save, uh, and how you kind of back it up and, and work with the files. And, um, and then we'll move on to the process questions. So uh, the first questions, and, and these are meant to be kind of short answer, basically. Uh, so what genres do you work in as a writer? Only, only poetry. Okay. Uh, what kind of devices do you own or have access to for writing? Just this. Just that computer. Machine. And uh, what operating system do you use on it? Is it I don't know. Is it a Windows computer? I think so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it, it, I'm pretty sure it is. I know almost nothing about it. Okay. <laughs> um, and you work on that device primarily, uh, and th that's where your files are stored as well? Um, my files are up here to the right. Okay. Um, they're artist sketchbooks, so they're unlined. Yeah. And I, I take notes from the reading I do sure. in those, and also include in green ink my own um, responses to the things I'm reading or things that occur to me that might turn out to be germs for lines. Okay. So so it's, you know, I I do that longhand. Yeah. Um and uh do you have then when do they transfer the f those those ideas and those workings onto the computer? And when when they are are, are they saved just on that computer? In a selective way. Okay. Then I'll I'll go into these notebooks and and take stuff from them and then in that form, uh, develop some of what's there, mm -hmm. add to it. Okay. Um, so that's part of the process too. Great. Um, so, and uh, and then so I guess I guess just in terms of your computer files, do, how did you, do you have them like in a in a certain folder? Do you save them in a certain kind of organizational fashion, or are they just? Once you transfer them there, they're there, and you don't worry about them. They're there, and I can find them alphabetically. Okay, okay. Um, and then when you work, I mean, so what are these? Are these files then primarily for your uh, for publishing sake, or I mean, like, do you only for composition? Only, only for composition, yeah, okay. right? Um, do you print them out and revise them from the computer? Sometimes. Sometimes. And uh, what are your naming conventions for those files? Usually the date. The date. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and if oh, you I'm sorry. The date and the notebook. So the notebooks are numbered. So oh, it'll okay. be from notebook 23 or something like that. Oh, great. So they'll be they'll they'll be that in addition to the date. And if you went and revised one of the computer files, would you uh, make a new file, or would you just like write over what's already there. I'd write over what's there and then it would get probably a different number of, you know, that yeah. that document number. Okay. <coughs> so it would be like uh, my example example here is like the wasteland dot one and then the wasteland two yeah, kind of thing. That kind of okay. thing. Um I'm sure T S Eliot would have loved computers. Uh and then do you back up those files or do you just keep them on that computer? Do you have do you put them on like a Dropbox or anything like that or is it just on that computer? On Wednesday I'm told by our tech that what's there gets backed up. Okay. So, you know, Wednesday at 2 a.m. or something like that or no, Thursday at 2 a.m. Okay. Some backup takes place and yeah. You know, so that's all I know about it. Do you have you don't have like an external hard drive or something some other box on which you put them? There's just this blue thing down there, whatever that is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Okay. That's it. Okay. Um, and uh, what do you do, like, when uh, when you get to, like, a final draft of something, What what is, is there another protocol for that sort of file, or? That file would have the title of the poem, mm -hmm. and, and then that would be, 
you know, the highest number of the draft of that poem would be the, the most current one, the one that's okay. replaced the others. Yeah, yeah. Um, and your tech, who is, what's the relationship between you and your tech? He's um, a genius. Um, he's an expensive genius. Uh -huh. um, his name's Steve Marinoff. We're entirely dependent on him, Susan and I, for okay. having these machines continue to work. <laughs> and he's never failed us. Good, <laughs> good. And he, and he, you guys like consult with him, like when you get a new machine, or how does how does that relationship work? If if that happens, or if something goes wrong with one of these, but mm -hmm. I'd I'd say we see him maybe three or four times a year. Okay. And he just checks to make everything, make sure everything's working and, and backing up and... Right. Sort of we thing. call him if we have a problem okay. and then we usually see him within a couple of days. He's, he's wonderfully reliable. How, how long has that relationship been going on? I think like eight years maybe, something okay. like that. He had worked for another company and then, and now he's on his own. Yeah. And kind of his own consultant yeah. or something. Great. Um, and did you seek him out, or did you know him? I mean, Susan um, had him come out when he was working for the company that he worked for before he had his own business. Okay. And liked him a lot. And great. So. Great. Um, He's confidence-inspiring. You know, I mean, we really count on him. That's that's the biggest. We're very thing, right? grateful to him. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay, so that that's the basic kind of like just kind of get a sense of, of where you're at with your digital composition, and now we'll talk more about uh, the process and, and the writing and the notebooks and, and, and the, the artist books and stuff like that. So, um, and then to start, I'd like to kind of know like how long would you say you've been writing professionally? I mean, in in a sense that it's that writing has been uh, what's kind of supported you in some way. I know the teaching, but I, I think that's kind of intertwined. I published my first poem 53 years ago. Okay. So, and um, and uh, could you give us kind of an overview of like the arc of your career, starting with maybe like uh, education and then moving through? I was an undergraduate at UC Santa Barbara mm -hmm. and had some extraordinary teachers there. Um, learned how to read didn't learn how to write, but I learned how to read, I think, from them. And yeah. then I did, did my graduate work, got a PhD at Stanford immediately after I graduated from Santa Barbara. And um, was through with the PhD in 1965 at a time when white males got jobs in the academy. Okay. And, and so I took the job at Irvine and, and began teaching in uh, the fall of 65 there okay. and understood at that time that I had six years to complete a book that would get me tenure uh -huh. and at that time there weren't poets getting tenure by writing books of poems yeah. so it seemed as if what I needed to do was continue the critical, expository writing that I'd done as a PhD student in English and American literature. Okay. I, I wrote and published four essays out of my dissertation. Um, they weren't exactly a book. I could have turned them into a book. Um, but after about two years in the job, I started writing quite bad poems, and they continue to be bad poems until I'd completed a book of them, okay. and I submitted it for publication. It was accepted. Um, it turned up in the mail. I sat down and read it, and it confirmed what I knew about it, which was that it was a really bad book of poems. And this is? This, this was in 1971 that okay. the book turned up. But it got me tenure, and um, and this but this is against the falling evil. Against the falling evil, okay. yeah. And well, it, had, it had some, it had the vegetables. It had the vegetables in it, and and it and that that was 
that was important to me in yeah. the sense that it gave me a standard that I wanted to to live up to in anything else I kept yeah. after that. And um, so then, you know, I had the great good fortune of being able to have it take as long as it needed for me to write another book. Um, I wrote the second book, which I still like, mm -hmm. and um, and then I've I've gone on from there with an inter with a kind of interruption in in the writing of poetry. I I finished four good things in the late seventies. It was published in nineteen eighty, and um, and then I then I wrote a book on Ulysses. Um, and and I needed I needed to teach myself how to write a paragraph. I didn't know how to write a paragraph. I knew how to write a paragraph in 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 graduate school prose, but yeah. but not a paragraph. Those yeah. are those are different things. And so <laughs> so that took that took quite a while. Um, I didn't understand that that's what I was doing at the time. I didn't understand that I didn't know what a paragraph was, but because I, I was meaning to be dealing with the content of what it was I was wanting to write about. Right. But it, it, took, it took about four years just to, to get that formal understanding in place about how, how, to, how to write a chapter of paragraphs. Yeah. And so I worked, on the, I worked on the Ulysses book uninterruptedly for about ten years. Okay. And and then didn't go back to writing poems until it was finished, and so I finished it. I finished it about 1990. Yeah. And then I've been working on poems ever since then. Okay. And you and since you then you published three books. I published um, each in a place apart, uh, the world at large, which is new and selected, and yeah. and there was you know it's only it's only about. A tenth of the of that book is new, yeah. and then capacity, which was published in 2006, and I've just completed another book called If You Can Tell. If you can tell, mm -hmm. and that's when do you do you know when that's coming up? I'm guessing uh, I'm guessing it'll be within the next two years. Great. So. Great. Um, uh, that's that's good. Um, so generally, I'm, I've, I've kind of uh, broken these questions into three stages of the writing process, the compositional stage, the stage of revision, and the organizational slash archival stage. Um, that is my own kind of box for these things. If you think those do not fit your own personal writing style, then we can, we can kind of go through these in different ways. Um, but if that sounds okay, then we can start. And if, but if any time it's just like, well, this doesn't make as much sense, and you can go back and, and revise, doesn't because we talked about one thing in one section doesn't mean we talk about it the only thing. Well, I understand the first two of those. They, they okay. seem perfectly clear, but what would the archival... Um, I, I would say that would be uh, once you've, you've revised um, poems into, or, 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 or critical writing, although probably focus more on poem, uh, into more of a final state. How do you deal with uh, organizing a collection? Um, how do you deal with then the the more the more minutia of saving them, making sure they're you know together and and sending them off. I mean, kind of. Okay. Kind of the. All right. Yeah. The pub, more the business part of it. And I guess I ask because that is that's going on all the time in in what I think of as the first two stages. Okay. Okay. And that's okay. So maybe we'll just we'll just address them okay. in the first two stages. And, yeah. And it's it's not that. Uh, um, Maybe I'll ask like a, a couple questions from that section, but there won't be much. It, it's. I mean, I, th this may just be parenthetical, but but for me, since I tend to work in extended, what can seem like book length forms almost all the time, okay. then any individual poem I'm working on has has a necessary relationship to everything else I'm imagining it's being with, yes. and so that's part of why what. What you're describing as archival yeah. would have to be kind of in front of me all the time. Right. So that I, that that may be part of why it seems to me that it's it's. No, that makes total yeah. sense to me. Um, that'll be a good shot. Just my neck. 
Um, <laughs> so, okay, so let's start with by talking about kind of the compositional, the, the writing, the pre-writing, the generative um, parts. And I know that reading has a bunch, has quite a lot to do for you. Yes. Um, so uh, I'd, I'd like to start when you, when you first started writing, and I guess uh, part of this will be kind of tracking like the changes in your process. So like if, if there were certain ways you worked as, at the beginning, like did those change and then did they change again? So when you first started writing, would you kind of describe your typical compositional pre-writing drafting practices? Uh, and yeah, so when you first started and when was when would this period be? Um, I guess I guess the early 1960s when I was still an undergraduate, okay. I, I was writing, uh, I mean if the poems that I wrote before 1970 were bad, those poems were awful. <laughs> so they were they were worse. And um, and there weren't many of them. Mm -hmm. um, soon after I'd started writing poems, I was in a PhD program. Okay. And even though I had a Stegner fellowship for one of the years that I was there, which um, entailed taking writing workshops, the, the workshop um, wasn't anything like the workshops that you and I know yeah. in, in the sense that um, not much went on in them. Okay. There were maybe four people in the room, and um, not much got said about them. Okay. And and it was a it was a very minor part of the four years that I spent getting a PhD. So the bulk of that work was was reading mm -hmm. and 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 writing essays and having conversations with my with my wonderful peers there. Right. So, so um, I, I didn't have any reliable habits as a writer of poems, I don't think, um, until, until I was maybe two years into the job at Irvine, so okay. let's say 1967 or something like that. Great. And, and then whatever it was I was doing wasn't working. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And um, and I think it wasn't working because what I was needing to do was convince myself that I knew how to write a poem. Yeah. So the 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 substance of the work was um, completely inverted in terms of its being um, a working out of my need to prove something to myself that I couldn't prove. Yeah. Um, um, I couldn't prove it because what I was proving to myself was that I didn't know how to write a good poem. Okay. And, and that went on for three or four years. And, and I think it didn't, it didn't, um, it, 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 it wasn't anything I could alter until, until I asked myself if there was something I needed to write about. Yeah. Uh, rather than just my own insecurity as someone who didn't know how to write a poem. Yeah. And then so in those, I guess did, in, in after you wrote that, or sort of started to ask yourself that question and, and you started to write the poems that you consider your, your good poems, um, did you, I mean in terms of the sort of minutia of your writing style, of your writing process, was, was did that start a certain, did that, would, did that mark a shift? Um, or was there always a sort of way that you approached the writing and that it just kind of gradually expanded? Or There had to have been the shift that since before writing The Vegetables, mm -hmm. which, which, was, which is a poem about um, um, the impact on me of, of my mother's death when I was 11 years old, um, prior to having that as as matter to write about, yeah. um, I I wouldn't I wouldn't have been able to identify a phrase that I came up with that that was good enough. There's no other way to say it. Yeah. It was good enough to keep. Um, I'd come up with phrases, and I I didn't have the acumen to be able to tell that. This phrase um, was better 
was enough better than the, the accompanying phrases that it could supply me with uh, an example of what I had to bring everything else up to. Yeah. And so I was just putting stuff together and there it was and it wasn't, it wasn't any good. Yeah. Um, after I wrote the vegetables I had, I had a standard that, um, that had to apply all the time. Yeah. And and once it was in place, then I had something to work with besides form. Right. I had form too, but I'd had form before when I was filling form with bad phrases. Yeah. And and so then I felt more equipped to know what to keep and what not to keep. So how were you then able to generate those phrases? I mean, like just the, how were you able to generate the phrase that then you could judge as being up to snuff or not? I, I guess by way, and this is, this is where what I said earlier about working in extended forms, the only way I could, the only way I knew how to generate it was to, to think really in book length terms. Okay. And, and so I'd have, you know, in the case of my second book, uh, The Lover's Familiar, I, I came up with something that's also formal but also structural, um, uh, the canonical hours. Mm -hmm. so, so I thought um, there are eight of those, midnight, 3 a.m., 6, all the way on to 9 p.m. Um, if they would organize the book as a whole and have uh, um, a medieval affect to them, faintly Catholic, yeah. if, if that was in place, but it was not really a religious book, um, how, might, how might things go? Yeah. And, and then um, there were going to be more than eight poems in the book, it turned out to be 15. Um, what, what would come in where in relation to uh, a 24-hour period, mm -hmm. um, what, what might happen between noon and 3 p.m. Yeah. And, um, and so I had, I had that, that general scheme as something that could direct me toward, um, in one case, a portrait of an otter. Yeah. You know, something, so, something along those lines. And yeah. And, and then a lot of stuff in, in, in the course of working on the book, which I'm trying to remember how long. I think it took me like four years to write it. You know, a, a lot of stuff just fell away because it, wasn't, again, wasn't good enough. Yeah. And then uh, in terms of, of simply the, like, uh, were you drafting by hand? And by hand, and all of it by hand. All of it by hand. And then, and then I would, the process through all of the books until this most recent one mm -hmm. was all longhand and then, and then um, typewriter. Okay. Um, and, and I loved, I loved typing successive drafts because typing is so much easier than composing. Yeah. So it was a break. You know, it was just, oh boy, I get to sit down and type. So I never minded typing. Yeah. And I suspected that, that I would miss it on this machine. Yeah. I didn't miss it. It turned out that since I'm typing all the time, I'm composing from the beginning and I'm redoing everything. And it's, it's I, I, I liked this. I liked, and, and I can't imagine that how it was possible to write uh, a book of prose, to, to write the Ulysses book, right. longhand with a typewriter. I mean, yeah. I just can't. It would have been so much easier if I'd had, if I if I'd had some facility with with the computer yeah. to write that. Yeah. Um, and so I guess so. You said so. So essentially, though, all of your books except this last one have have followed the similar process. Yes. Of, and could you kind of detail that, like in the kind of like like step by step yeah. kind of process? Um, I, I, um, on a good day, I mean, I, I have to work every day, mm -hmm. um, usually in the morning, 
um, sometimes as early as four. Uh, I, I, I didn't mean to get up at that time, but I was awake at that time, and, and I was wide awake at that time, and yeah. I'd go to work right away. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'd go back over what I had to that point in a poem, and, and I'd find stuff that had to be revised, and so I'd do the revision. And, and sometimes that would be all I would do on a given day. And then something, something that I hadn't yet gotten to would um, suggest itself, and, and I'd have a phrase or a sentence. And, 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 and that, that's, what I, that's, that, that's what I mean when I use the word compose, is yeah. that something I hadn't had yet there's at least the possibility that I might have, and it would sound maybe something like this. Maybe one or more of the words would yeah. would actually um, survive, and so then I'd nudge it along a little more. And and on a good day, if I had a line and a half or two lines, that yeah. would that would be a pretty good day, and that could take that could take four hours. And in doing that, in, in kind of getting to that point, is that all done on on notebook paper? On longhand, yeah. Longhand. What, what did I work? I, I think I just worked by eight by eleven sheets of paper. Okay. I remember at one point they were yellow and then they were white. You know, so it didn't matter. That <laughs> it didn't point. matter. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, like, what would one of those pieces of paper look like? Um, a lot of crossing out. Okay. Um, rehearsing what I had already um, that that needed to be there to remind me of what what seemed as if it had made um, the cut with me yeah. as something that could be kept okay. and then and then some you know something new would join it for a while but it wouldn't really be good enough and then it would have to be revised and then pretty soon it would it would be better enough maybe to stay and then when I'd get I don't know what eight or nine lines more then I'd go to I'd go to the to the um, typed copy of what I'd of what I'd um, transcribed from longhand uh, onto onto typed copy and add what was new and make what changes I'd made in longhand and um, and then just bring all of that along with me and um, and when I was when I was writing my third book um, for good things then that that entailed um, thousands of lines yeah. in in untitled sections there are 16 sections of it of varying lengths and I'd do it section by section and and it was pretty much chronological mm -hmm. um, but some of the sections were I don't know 16 17 pages long right. and so I'd, I'd go through the whole process for that particular section you know if I were typing up what I would recently added four or five lines to I'd probably type the whole thing again okay so you were, so you were generating lines longhand, uh, working on those, and then as they got to the level where you thought they could enter into the poem, you would then retype yes. the entire poem, yeah, and, and or, or section, yeah, uh, and and go from there. And never minded that activity. Yeah. Never minded it. Yeah. <laughs> Did you find that in typing that were you actively making changes at that time, or not? So not so much. Okay. Not so much. And then. Once you had that uh, object, would you go back and read it to yourself or read it yes. out loud? Yeah. And then at that, and then you would start the revision process on that typewritten document. Probably, I'd wait till the next day. Okay. You know, okay. and it would, it would, more often than not, not look so good the next day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, so so, would you uh, save these uh, sheets of paper on which you were longhand composing? Not with any fondness. 
Okay. You know, I mean, they were only they were only for my uses. It was not anything I wanted to preserve in any way. Yeah. I, I didn't care about anything other than finishing the poem and having it done, and that was right. that was all that mattered to me. Okay. And I didn't I I I didn't often find myself in situations in which lines that I deleted. I later missed mm -hmm. and and wished I had copies of them to see if I could. I mean that happened a few times, but it was it was so rare that I don't think it influenced um, my my ways of going at the whole process. I yeah. I, I didn't I, I didn't ever regret you know throwing stuff away. Right. Right. Um. And then, so I guess we can kind of maybe talk then about how. We, I mean, we're already talking about the revision process for these poems, um, and it seems like I, I, I've sort of asked uh, the other writers like what your pr sort of primary mode of revision or textual change is, and it seems it's sort of subtractive. Like you would find something that you didn't like, yes. and then would you try to substitute something in for that? If I could find it, if you could find it, and and if I couldn't, then it probably needed, you know, to disappear. The, just that part? or Just that part, okay. just that part. Okay. But you, once you kind of had a structure of a general poem, though, it usually stayed? By the time I got to the end of it, it did. I mean, it's all, it, my, I work on them always only cumulatively, okay. so that, so that I take them along line by line. I don't, yeah. I don't, I'm not able to write a draft of something the only the only variation on that is that is that I'll sometimes get the ending, you know, it'll oh. it'll present itself to me, I mean the the phrases and okay. and and I'll have that as a kind of telos for where I'm headed. Not all the time, yeah. but but I'd say half the time that happens. Some somewhat in advance of my getting. You know, even within a couple of pages of the ending itself, okay. it'll it'll occur to me, and it won't it won't tell me what is missing. It it it, it won't do that. Yeah. It'll just be something that I feel would provide the kind of closure that I that I that I think would work. Yeah. Um, and so okay, so so essentially, you you are writing. I don't know if you went chronologically or. No, it is chronological. So okay. Yeah. So it, it just it's as you build it and build it and build it and build it and that's and the revision process and the composition process are all happening at the same yep. time. Yep. And that's happening in uh, in concert with the other poems in the book, or are you usually focused on one until it's done and then you move on? I'm focused on one, but I have a pretty good sense of where it might go organizationally okay. in relation to the others, except except right at the beginning of the project. Yeah. You know, at that point, I, I you know, I, I, I'm not I'm not clear on what's missing. Right. <laughs> you know, it's right. it's I'm I'm. I'm working toward beginning to understand what the whole might might contain. Yeah. Um, but uh, I just have to wait until. Um, I mean, if I think of the last two books, they're they're six poems in capacity and eight poems here, mm -hmm. uh, eight poems in the most recent one. And and that's in both cases that's a small enough number that I'm not sure where in the process of writing either of those books, whether it took me three or four poems to have a sense of what else I needed. Yeah. But it was somewhere in there. You know, okay. it was it was like midway. Then I then I'd be a little clearer. Can you talk a little bit about like what that point is at the beginning of a project? Like how that does it. Is there something starting to emerge in your thinking and your reading, or where do you, where does that come from? Again, I have to I have to learn what it's possible to learn about the first and the second poem that I that I write in mm -hmm. in, in in any of the projects, um, and. Um,
if I think about this most recent book, I, I was commissioned by the New York Times to write a Thanksgiving poem, right. and that was the first poem that I wrote for, that, for, for, for this most recent book. And I wrote it, and I kept taking my notes on on all of the things that I was reading, um, and um, and was caught up in the reading and the note taking and all of that, and all of it was to the end of my getting started on a second poem, and I had no idea what that was for two years, uh -huh. and then. And then that poem came out of Proverbs, and then I spent another year and a half before I had any lines at all on a third poem. Okay. And and I look back over um, a four and a half to five year period in which I had um, written two poems, yeah. neither of them particularly long. The the longer of the two was four pages, okay. and. That was all I had. I didn't have a page a year, essentially. And, and I don't, for the life of me, understand why I didn't um, just accept that I was through writing. I, I, you know, I mean, that, that yeah. should have been enough. Right. But, but that, wasn't, that wasn't what I felt, and I, d I don't know why, but I didn't. And, and, then, and then I guess I'd taught myself enough about what I was trying to learn in the whole project, that it got underway, yeah. and and then and then there was a momentum to it that I don't really remember in any of the other in any of the other books that I wrote. There was a kind of momentum in writing in writing four good things, but it was it was a momentum that that I would describe as documentary, okay. even though there's an autobiographical element to yeah. it. It was as if I could hear some kind of narrator in a documentary mm -hmm. um, saying this thing or that, and and the and the form of the thing was um, usually more than a ten-syllable line in this monolithic block that looked kind of like prose, but yeah. still had enjambments and 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 was lines. And so, so I had that gave me a kind of momentum, but but very different from from what I uh, f from the lack of momentum that that I had when I began this book. Anyway, I mean, there just wasn't any. I didn't know where it was going to come from. And you, um, I guess, in those, uh, you said that you you were kind of teaching yourself to get to the point where you you could get that momentum back and start and start writing more. Um, what what do those what do those parts of your life look like in terms of your your writing your pr your practice? I mean, you're still waking up and working. And, yeah. And uh, I mean, in your writing, in your reading, and yeah. you're taking notes. So All the does, time. Can you describe how that works? How how that part of your practice works? And that's been pretty steadily since the beginning, or since you started writing for for the second book. Well, act yeah, I, yes, all the all all the way back. And I think I think the reading and note taking part of it has gotten to be um, more dominant over the course of the time. Yeah. Um, these notebooks, and there are about probably ten others than the ones that fit in that shelf right there. Mm -hmm. That's about four years worth. Okay. And and prior to those, I was working. Um, with five by eight cards, writing in longhand, and then that just got organ that that got to be too hard to keep track of. So I had boxes of them and you know yeah. arranged alphabetically. But this this is a this is an improvement on that. Uh, it's it's just a it's more uh, it's something I can find and I've indexed these so I can find my way around these books in a way that the cards were just there just got to be too many of them. And, and so the cards you had them in, like just like regular cards, like where, would you flip through them like a catalog, like a card catalog kind of? Or? Except I wouldn't flip through them. That's okay. the thing. So they they just they didn't invite me back to them the way these do. Mm -hmm. You know, I can I can take one of these down at random and and be reminded pretty quickly of why it was that particular book that I was reading and yeah. why I was having the responses to it that I did. Um, 
Do you mind grabbing one of those no. and just kind of showing how you would do that? Where do, where do we need to have it? <laughs> I don't know. Probably, hopefully, we'll get it in the frame. Um, so, let's see if I can find some pages here where I've gone well, I back can take to work. Pictures of these, if you don't mind. Not at all. Um, I work on the. I work on. These are the notes that I would take for, for the book that I'm that I'm reading. Mm -hmm. um, the red is the is the more important material. It's something that that if I'm going through it, I can I can read and just pick pick out the highlighted yeah. parts. Okay. Then then green are my own responses, and and so I'm working always on the right hand page when I'm taking notes mm -hmm. from the books I'm reading. Then when I'm going back over the material. I'll work on this page, okay. and there'll be other changes, and usually more green will turn up. Okay, and that's your response to the. Okay, I got it. And so you say you in. How do you index them? Just by uh, by title and um, let's see. I've got I've got some of those pages here. Okay. Um, and index by here? title of of work that you're reading. Yeah. Now where did they go? See, I should know where they are, Devin. <laughs> But I had the sheets. <laughs> we can't find them now. <laughs> they were usually in this red notebook, so they're they're pages they're pages of an index that that ha that are arranged according to um, the notebook numbers, and and they're here. Susan just rearranged them. They're somewhere in here. They're not lost. Okay, good. I hope. <laughs> so, so then I can just find my way to the notebook, and and it'll have the page numbers and everything. Well, oh, oh, then then in the front of. Yeah, then in the front of each notebook, I have the title and, and the page numbers. Okay. Oh, okay. And and then so you know you can go back and find the the wor the work that you were thinking about yes. or whatever you're doing. Right. Okay. Me then. You're very patient. <laughs> no, no, it's all I like though. He's a good guy. Uh, <laughs> no, I have a new appreciation for dogs too. You know, it's, it's our first dog, so. Sort of Would she be smelling Rufus on you? I don't know. Maybe, maybe on these jeans. Yeah. I'm admitting my jeans are not super clean. But <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. So the the. What, so the index cards that you, were they cards that you they were cards. Okay, and that's what. Shall I? I can. I think. Well, I don't know if I have them. She may have moved those. She's moved them somewhere. I don't know where they've gone. Well, we can we can find them and take, okay. take pictures later. Okay. Um. Michelle wanted one. She I gave her one and. She framed it. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> um, so, uh, in all that, in all that note taking, and so say, let's, I mean, is there like a hypothetical where you could say, like, I used my index to find something, and then that led to a line, or uh, how would that? I guess what what's that process like? It, that that is the way it tends to work, and yet I can't go back once I've got the line, yeah. unless I'm quoting. Right. I can't. I can't make a connection. <laughs> there's just there's just some kind of break. Oh, that's interesting. Um, something gets suggested, and I I I can never reconstruct it. Okay. Wow. Um, 
Another way to say it is that I think the reading, it feels like the reading does this to me. Like it just pulls yeah. me out towards stuff that other people, the writers of the books I'm taking notes on, yeah. are more connected to than I am. Okay. But they do a, a good enough job of saying what their connections to it are that that the things I'm reading become suggestive to me mm -hmm. of of things that I you know didn't know that that they make available and and then and then and then that gives me the sense that there's less I've failed to address you know and and therefore maybe I'm maybe I've been brought to a position with their help of being able to find a phrase that lets me move from this point in where I am with the poem I'm writing yeah. um, further along. How do you uh, choose the books that you're reading? Um, the disciplines that that have that I've gone back to more and more than any others are philosophy, mm -hmm. theology, um, history, um, psychology, um, sociology, anthropology, um, and 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 one or another of those will seem like it's more pertinent depending on where I am in, in, in yeah. the process and and so so I'm on Amazon a lot and trucks stop in front of the house <laughs> fairly frequently and um, and I'm helped enormously by um, by you know the succession of books that turn up at the door that that I have the time to uh, you know indulge myself with right and do that I mean so you, you mentioned Amazon are you using like the recommendations that Amazon provides you or are you usually finding a book from another book I'm usually finding a book from another book they okay. do send me the monthly thing here's here's my list and I go through it but yeah. I'm usually ahead of them okay and that's good <laughs> <laughs> like but they're not but they're not bad at it oh know? no I yeah know. You've got a pretty powerful it's, it's their job <laughs> yeah it is it's what they do um so uh going back then you said then so that every book until this last book was composed in longhand composed yes and then on a typewriter what, right. what's the change then for this final for this final or the, the last book here um, uh, there was, there was, as I said before, there was just a surprise that I wasn't, I wasn't at all missing the typing, the yeah. typing stage, probably because it was all typing. Yeah. So it was as if that's what happened with this mach machine, was that the longhand and the typing just coalesced and became the same activity. And and it, I don't I don't feel it made any of it any quicker. Okay. I mean, it probably did, but it, it, that wasn't the sense I had of it. Um, it, it was it was less cumbersome, yeah. you know, because it sits here and I put it over here and yeah. and and all of that. Um, but it it seemed like a very easy transition. Yeah. I don't miss the typewriter, which I loved, you yeah. know. But I don't miss it. Yeah. I think it's in my storage space, about two miles away from here. You know, <laughs> and um, so it, it was just it, it couldn't have been an easier shift, mm. you know, from 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 that technology to this one. I don't Did, think. And so I, I could just to clarify for myself, it, are you still doing the longhand composition or is, it, is all of that work now happening on the computer? It's all happening here except when I don't take the computer with me, say, to Idaho. Okay. Then I will work in longhand. Yeah. 
So I'll take it, I'll print out whatever it is, of, whatever it is I have of the thing I'm working on, mm -hmm. and I'll take that printed copy with me, and yeah. then I'll just work with, work on longhand with it leaving the computer here, and then I'll be back in three weeks or something like that, and then, you know, reincorporate it into, into the, what I've got here in my files. Okay. So one thing I, I guess I might, so in the composition stage, are you, do you still do like strike through? In yeah, that? yeah. Okay. I'd work pretty much the way I worked before. Just you've just transferred those processes onto the computer. Yes. Did it take some time to figure out how to do that, or no. is it fairly intuitive? No. Yeah. yeah. And I and I and I I guess I mean, then then another aspect of it is letters that I write here. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm doing, uh, I'm doing whatever revision I do of the of the emails I send yeah. right here on this so it's in that way it's a, this is this makes it a little more personal since um, I can't remember what it was like to write a letter to somebody that right. wasn't you know that wasn't one of these yeah. and 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 I understand that you know that letters you post aren't any more invasive than than something you send here but I love how non-invasive this is as a as a medium, um, and and not n not so much in terms of my being protected against being invaded by somebody else, yeah. but being able to say something, you know, send somebody something here, and understand that they can open it when they want, and yeah. that it's not it's not an imposition on them. And you, so explain that a little bit. So the non-invasive part, are you think? So do you feel like the letter was a more invasive? No, I think it probably wasn't. Okay. But but it but I but it took more trouble to write it. Yeah. And post it, and you know, you thirty two cents or whatever right, it was, right, right. <laughs> yeah. whatever a letter cost to send before I started doing this. Yeah. And then I have a then I have a friend uh, who's a lifer, and he doesn't have a computer, mm -hmm. so so it's with Robbie that I correspond, you know, by by snail mail. Yeah. And do those do those feel different now? I mean, like is it sort of a more of a difficult thing to get up to write that yes. letter? Yes. Yes it is. And and I wind up writing it here and printing it out and signing it and putting it in the mail so, to him. Yeah. Yeah. And then his letters to me are all in longhand. Huh. Um Okay. Uh I guess, the, and then in, in keeping with this latest work, when you went back to revise the poems, did it, that was fairly similar process too. I mean, I think it was exactly, exactly the, same. the same. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, kind of a general question about uh, your revision process, and this is one that I kind of, um, and this is a little bit repetitive, but are they so? Are the revisions driven by? sound, by meaning, by theme, by structure, are, are these all kind of intertwining? I think they are. Okay. Okay. Um. And it's, you know, it has to be, it just has to be, what can your ear bear here, you know? Yeah. And, and, and if it can bear it, is it saying what it has to be saying? So that's kind of step one and step two? Yeah. For your revision? Yeah. Like and, and they're probably inseparable. Right. Right. Um, do other people play a process in your revisions or in your working? Um, yes, they do. Okay. How so? Um, I'll send them drafts and get responses from them okay. that are almost always helpful. Yeah. Um, and, um, and they're helpful in terms of, um, in terms less of my being able to meet what they might have preferred mm -hmm. uh, to having what they've said to me help me prefer <laughs> what happens once I've made the revisions. Okay. And, so. and are those have those people stayed the same throughout the career? They've changed somewhat. Um, uh, they've yeah. It's it's there have been a a, a couple who who were new in the last four or five years mm -hmm. on this on this most recent book. Yeah. Um, colleagues. 
And and will how will that process work? Will you now like email them a section and whereas before you might send them a letter with the section or Yeah, it's it's easier. Yeah, this makes it a lot easier to, to yeah. do. And and then of course I get I get work from 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 people in this yeah. form too. And, yeah. and I like I like that and um and I've I've liked it in I mean I haven't taught now for a year and a half but but I've I've really liked the way um the computer makes it possible to relineate mm -hmm. poems that I've gotten from students just mm -hmm. to give them a sense of how I hear what they're doing with the line it's yeah. it's been it, it's been a help though it it's been a help to me I I haven't seen much evidence that it means anything to all of them. <laughs> no, I can tell you from experience, it's a lesson. It's, it's a valuable lesson. It's oh, good. Thank you. Well, you may be the only one. <laughs> um, sometimes it's difficult in, in, in the lesson to learn, but uh, that's really valuable. Uh, and, okay, let me, let me look at this for a second. Do you want to take a break? I'm fine. Okay. Maggie wanted to take a break. <laughs> She's tired of these questions. Uh, so how did you keep track of all these things? I, I mean, I guess with the computer, it's fair that you have one file with all of them in it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then before that, were there, were you, did you just have them in a binder or? Just loose pages, probably loose with pages? a with a clip, with probably. A clip. Yeah. Okay. And with that, um, as you got the manuscript more towards what you wanted that just grow bigger and yeah. bigger yeah so that's it's a fairly easy way to do yeah it. yeah okay so there wasn't like some of the other writers have had have, you know they have their special notebooks they have a kind of like process where they move from notebook to this to this and, and that wasn't no th that the part of the writing was never that no and those and those files and that sort of ephemera is never it doesn't seem that it was that dear to you no and it's still not no okay um do you know have you ever thought about why all I care about is the product. That's all I care about. And when do you, and what do you consider the product? The poem that I can't make any better. Okay. Um, do you, uh, I guess, and so in the same way that the computer, how do you feel about the computer files? Do you like try to, do you have much sort of sense of like trying to maintain them and keep them or are they just sort of means to getting it to that point? They're um, they're the work in progress um, at at the most recent stage. Yeah. If I'm going to get on an airplane, I'll I'll send I'll send what I've got on the book as a whole to a couple of people. Okay. And you know they'll understand why I did it. Yeah. You know so and that would be that would be one of the one of the later things that I would do before we got on the car to take us to the airport, you know. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, it's egomaniacal, you know, in its way. Yeah. But. But I mean, it's also your work. It's right? my work. Yeah. Um, and then I guess I, so. So the, the the product, the poem that where 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 does it exist? Is it in the book? Is it in just a printed out page? Is it? Is it? I mean, I know you. I know you're a very strong, you know, proponent of, of the oral poem. Um, I guess that's that, that's sort of a, a larger question. But where is it? I guess it's in the book. It's in the book. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I would want I would want form, which in my case is the line mm -hmm. and the stanza. I would want form to instruct. A reader of that book on how I hear the phrases and the sentences. Right, right. Um, do you ever record yourself doing this? Have you ever that like recorded yourself reading a book, or has ever anybody ever asked you to do that? I I did read. Somebody recorded all of capacity. Uh, Matt Nelson did it. Okay. Um, some years ago, um, I did. I did. I was asked to do some for the for one of those New York. Yeah. 
society, poetry society, or I can't remember what the others are, but I, I did, I, I have recorded some things. I've liked doing it, mm -hmm. um, but it's been, it's only been when somebody's asked me for a recording. Okay. Um, I think that would be a valuable We've, an, we've gone, we've actually kind of organically answered a lot of the questions I had, so that's nice. Um, does, uh, this is a little off topic, but does the, has the internet changed the way that you do any of this process? Has, has the kind of availability of all this extra information allowed you to maybe find books or uh, find ideas or research online in a way that changed anything for your writing? I'm, I'm so bad at this that that Amazon's been like about the only resource that I've okay. that I've been helped by. Yeah. I, I'm sure there's lots else there but I, it hasn't it hasn't served me. I'll Google some things but not much. Not much. And do you have you, I mean, wh why do you feel like you're bad at it, I guess is a question. Is it just something, but is it something that, I mean, is it something that you feel like kind of naturally, inherently bad at? Or? Yes, I okay. feel naturally, inherently <laughs> bad at it. <laughs> um, and in the times that you've sort of attempted to teach yourself, it's just it, not something that's come naturally and not something that you, I guess, needed. I, I think, yeah, I think if I if I had needed it more, I probably would have. Yeah. availed myself of uh, of it more and taught myself how to do it and I, I guess yeah I, I guess I haven't felt a need of it yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and just and, and just for again the, your like where where the, your files and folders kind of reside on your computer are they do you have like a folder for that book with all the drafts, or is it just one document? Just one document. Just so one it's document. the most recent. It's the most recent. Okay. And right. that's how it works for almost everything. Yes. Okay. And and I think that would be related to what you probably remember is that you know if I'm if I'm seeing students revisions, I'm interested in in the one that they feel is the strongest. Yeah. And I'm not going to compare it to earlier things. Right. You know, I'm just I I want. I want them to be making that call, and that's what I want them to hear from me back about. Right, right. Um, how do you? Th I mean, and, and you sort of spoke about this in your in describing your earlier practices. I mean, how did you learn? How did you get that acumen and sort of being able to tell? I mean, it's just I. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I listening to a lot of great great music I think I mean I that would that would make more sense to me than anything else huh. okay and what I mean what was the is there a, is there a, is there a progression of music that you listen yes. to over yes yes can you talk a little bit about that um, I, I I think I was helped um, immeasurably by what I listened to when I was 12 and 13 and just just in a really bad way, and yeah. and that was that was first um, jazz from the early '50s um, that got that got to be m more and more exclusively black jazz mm -hmm. and um, or black musicians, mm -hmm. uh, and and that got me through high school, and then. And then I had other things to do once I went to college, yeah. and and it kind of was suspended, um, pretty much all the way through my undergraduate work and my graduate work, and then came back once I had the job here, and um, and so in the late '60s it was, you know, it was, uh, it was the popular music rock mostly and mm -hmm. and and the stones and hendrix were kind of at the top of that list and then hendrix was dead and the stones weren't what they had been yeah. and at that point there was you know i had i had a need for 
for music that got to me, and and there wasn't any more of it coming either from jazz or from rock, and mm -hmm. and so then I I started learning class, you know, learning the the literature uh, of classical music, and 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 it's it's had hold of me since November of 1973, <laughs> <laughs> and um, and. You know, I, 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 f I feel that it's trained my ear to be what it is, yeah. and, and I don't know how it's done that, but, but it's been elemental to me. Did you, did you take any formal no. education? Did just, no. Did just a listening? Just listen. And, and where would you find, how would you move, how would you find new things, what, how was your, what was your progress? From, you know, from composers and from artists, okay. both, so going at it both ways. Yeah. Um, and the, have there been particular composers that, um, or, or artists at times that you've listened to more? I mean, like, is there, does it move forward or? It's been Mahler and Beethoven okay. at the top and, you know, and then, and then Brahms and Bach and, um, um, loads of others, but, but, but Mahler and Beethoven most of all. And you based, I mean, you based one of your stanzaic forms on, on, wh on the, who was it? Was it? Well, it was Schoenberg, whom, I, whom I'm not that crazy about, okay. but, the, but the 12 tone system suggested to me a stanzaic progression in which, uh, if I've got, as I've had in the, in the two most recent books, one, two, three, four, and five line stanzas, yeah. the 12 tone system in which he would not come back to a note until he had used the other 11 right. in the scale, suggested to me a form um, in which, in which I would not, um, I would not interrupt the progression of one, two, three, four, five, um, until I'd exhausted all of those five, and then I would begin the next sequence with another number and try to have that second sequence be as varied from the first as I could be mm -hmm. and continue that all the way through. Okay. And that's not to say that I wouldn't wind up having a 3, 2, 1, 4, 5 sequence somewhere else in the poem, but I'd want it to be removed by several other sequences. Right. So, um, so Variety is is one of the models, but that was the but that was the form. And that was and how did you did you pick that up by listening or was that from reading? I mean, are you reading about this as well? Or? No, I mean, I just I just knew what the twelve tone system was and okay. and knew no more about it than that. You know, okay. I mean, it's it's just like but a one sentence thing. And, yeah. And so that suggested itself to me, and I I began it with a poem I wrote about Greenland called The World at Large. And there I was working with one, two, three, and four. I stopped at four there, and then and then the next the next time I, I I was into capacity into that book, then I I added a five line stanza. So it was more it was more more capacious. Um, great. Uh, I would say too. I would say too that when I think back about moving from the late 60s when I was writing poems I didn't like, that weren't very good, into the early 70s, I think there's, there's a non-accidental relationship between um, the forms I was working with having been as short as a three-minute take, you know, yeah. and, you know, uh, a sonata, a sonata form or a, um, uh, a scherzo trio form or an adagio or something like that, 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 that my, um, the length of the, the units that I was working on got larger when I was, when I was listening to 
to um, pieces of music that were, you know, that were eight, nine minutes to half an hour long. Great. That makes a lot of sense. Um, in this, and you're listening in this capacity, was it a, a very active listening? I mean, is it usually like you're alone with the music or like, is it a head, do you listen to it on headphones? Both, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. A lot of, you know, spending a lot of time with it. Yeah. And are, are you ever writing while that's on? No. It's, it's no. You, you give the, the yeah. attention to the music? Yeah. Okay. And, you still, and that's still a part of your process now? Yes. Um, okay. Uh, I have a little bit, a few more questions on, a little bit on teaching and then just kind of the blunt ending question. Uh, and I, you've, you've, you did you just speak about this with the computer kind of changing your with the students. You can give you can kind of reline their poems to show yeah. them how you hear them. And, um, is there any other ways that you've seen uh, this computer sort of age like adjusting or affecting your teaching and, and working with students? I don't think so. It it, it it's made it it's made it all um, more efficient in terms of. You know, not having to go to the mailbox to get the copies, but you just come here and here here's their poem, and that, I've liked that, and yeah. I think they like it too. Right, right. Um, uh, do you see that they have? I mean, do you see in, the, in in your sort of later students that there was like a uh, an increased technological or cultural understanding that affected their workers? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, except except that that I think um, there's probably a proclivity for exotic words that they trust Google will help you with. I think that's happened. Yeah, yeah. That's I don't. That's not necessarily a gain, <laughs> but it's but it's not you know it's not terrible either. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's, that's not that's not bad. Um, and so I, I guess I just have, you know, like the kind of blunt questions. I mean, that the sort of, you know, the frame of my thing, of my study is what changes happened, you know, with this rise of the personal computer? I mean, for you, it seems like maybe not that many. Um, do you see, I mean, do you have any opinions on, on like kind of how, is there a change in feel, a change in structure or? I, I like, I like, What's personal about this medium in that way that I've described already? Yeah. I, I like the contact this machine gives me with people. I feel, I feel it's certainly more immediate. Um, I think it, it's increased the contact that I have with people who are spread around the world. Yeah. Um, it's been more important to me since I don't go into school and run into people that I have conversations with. Right. And I like I like the fact that that it's this keyboard that connects me with them mm -hmm. and this keyboard that connects me with strangers who might read my poems. Yeah. And I like I like that about this a lot. Right. I like it a lot. I like it all the more now that when the phone rings, 90% of the time, even though I've asked not to be called by telemarketers, it's telemarketers. Yeah, because most of your conversations that are important now are, are on the computer. Yeah. Um, and then I guess, has that changed the poems? I mean, has that... I don't think so. No? Okay. Um, but, I can't, but I can't know that. Yeah. You know? I mean, it might well, it might well have. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's interesting to me. I mean, like, I guess just thinking of the Ulysses class and just, like, you know, thinking about that connection with people being so integral to thinking about that book and, and about what you were talking about. Um, and My favorite class ever. I mean, by, I mean, just by miles and miles. <laughs> Good. I'm glad I was in um, I'm glad you were, too. But I mean, I guess. But I'm interested. I mean, though that I mean, it is in a sense a very democratic object. It is. And I guess I can see that yeah. the, the, your relationship to it in that way. Um, and I guess it will be left for others to comment on how that may have approached change. Uh, 
Okay. Well, thank you very much. Oh, it's been so good. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> You're so good at this. Um, you really are. Um, so, yeah, so if I could, I guess, sort of, get, I wish I was a better photographer, but take some photos of, of your kind of organization and, and maybe if we can sure. try to send those index cards and stuff like that.